So many people say that he's the cutest little puppy. Mm-hmm. Charlie the puppy puts on a brave face for his first wellness exam. Hello, hello. Hi. How are you all? Great, thank you. How are you doing, young man? You know you who all that right? is? A little bump there. So you have a new puppy? Yes. What's the baby name? Charlie. All right, let's 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 take a look at this baby. At our appointment today, I'm hoping that he is very, very healthy so that he can live a long time. Charlie is actually normally very rambunctious when he's not asleep. Charlie, he's he bites and he hops and stuff. I love playing with Charlie. He's gonna be big. Yep, he's a gonna big be a boy. big boy. <laughs> I need to puppy love this morning. <laughs> She's trying to take your baby. You need to tell her no, no, no. Yeah. Just bury it. All right, you ready? 6.7 pounds. A little bit more than you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You going to help me out? Because mm -hmm. we need to look in his mouth, OK? So when I count to three, we're going to both say, ah, so he can open his mouth. You ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Say, ah. Uh. It doesn't work. If it did, I would have been surprised. <laughs> you would have had the only dog that, ever, that had ever worked on. <laughs> it's a good feeling when you have kids in to have new puppies because you know they're going to grow up together and you know it's going to teach them how to be respectful and accountable for the animals and their wellness. We look in there and everything looks good. We are six weeks. Seven. All right, so this will be our first vaccines today. Yes. When they're born, they get antibodies from mom. Mm -hmm. But they'll start kind of dropping off, weaning off. Yes. That's why we start doing vaccines when they're six or eight weeks old. Yay. You like getting shots? Mm-hmm. Do you? What? Okay, mama gonna stop you by the doctor on the way home. <laughs> Since you like I'm them so much. just saying anything, because right. you're in right here. So we're just gonna give it under the skin here. All right. It's all over. Look at that. You can watch. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and deworm them anyway, because a lot of times they're born with parasites. I so said we need to repeat this in three weeks. But other than that, everything looks good. OK. He's oh. biting me. He's biting my fingers. See, look. Oh, he knows you. Look. It was really cool. I'm very happy with my visit here. You are absolutely lucky that you are so yummy. I want to be a vet one day. Have a good day. You too. All right. Take care of that baby, OK? Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Dr. Hodges' first patient of the day is itching, and not just for attention. Today, I have Shirazu with me. He is a nine-month-old boy rat. He has this cute little personality, and he's just so loving. He just looks at you with these eyes that just melts your heart. He's like, I love you. <laughs> he has a little bit of a rash on his neck area, and we just wanted to have it checked out. Hey, guys. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Hi, hi. How long have we had Shirazu? Since June. Yeah, he has these little spots on here. Right, and then it came down on the side, and we'd been using these wipes, and they were working, and then all of a sudden they weren't. We rescued him from an animal shelter in Columbus. OK. Him and his brother. How about if we put you in here? Does that feel more comfortable? Oh, that feel more comfortable? Oh, hey. Hey, bud. Has he ever had surgery or anything? No, sir. I'm trying to see what the heck that is. It's like a string or something there. Right now. As I'm examining Shirazu, I see like a string or a suture. Definitely something that should not be there. Come on. Hmm. You see it? I see that. It's like suture material. I'm pretty sure that. Oh my goodness. Oh. It is. They did not have any information on him when we got them, other than somebody just dropped both of them off and pretty much left them. That's a piece of it came out on that one. Yeah. And then it's another one where you're handed right here. That's really weird. We've been eating okay? As far as we know, yeah. And we're just gonna go take a quick picture and make sure we aren't. Let's go shoot the x-ray right quick. Okay. I'm very concerned about this area of inflammation. You always worry about large growths around a rat because they're very prone to tumors. Just want to make sure there's nothing internally going on. T. What's up? So I got this rat, man. Looking at the lungs and the chest, that actually looks pretty good. But look at this side. It almost looks like suture material, but I don't know what the heck it is. Look at the inflammatory as compared. Yeah, a little bit large on that one side. It doesn't look like a tumor, but it definitely looks like an infectious area. It caused an inflammatory yeah. response. As you say, you got it out, though? You I think that? so. Yeah. It's really weird. Hey, guys, whatever that material was, it's definitely caused the inflammatory response, so. 
what we'll do is uh, make some antibiotics and see if we can get this thing healed up. Does he have a flavor? Grape, orange, apple? No, he's our picky one. I was gonna say he doesn't <laughs> like sweets. I think I might have tuna flavor or chicken flavor. They do like chicken. Chicken? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe we'll make it chicken flavor. If you can, that would be great. So my game plan is to treat this rat with some anti-inflammatories and some antibiotics, and I think psoriasis should be fine. Once a day by mouth, okay? And it ha both of these medications have to be in the refrigerator. Good luck. Awesome, thank you so All much. All right, see y'all later. It makes me feel a lot more comfortable knowing that there's no tumors and it's just a little bit of inflammation. He's asleep in his little carry case and he's ready for his ride home and his treat when he gets there. And that makes me feel very relieved. You're such a good boy. I'm so proud of you. That rat, mm -hmm. this foreign substance, I still don't even know what it is. With almost 50 years of experience combined. You think you know it all and you've seen it all? We really haven't. I think we should get that on a t-shirt. I'll have one you think you really know it all. And then you put, <laughs> you really have it. <laughs> That'll be perfect. OK, we're going to eight now. <laughs> She's picking up pieces of hay and throwing it. <laughs> Honey Ray, the lop-eared rabbit, checks in with a lopsided look. Hey. Hello, how you doing? Good morning. I see we got Honey Ray. I understand we have a head tilt. Yeah, she's held on an ear. Yeah, head damn. Tilt Let's take a look at this ear. Oh, head tilt in rabbit is something that's very serious. It indicates that we have ear infection or an infection with a nerve or a combination of both. She holds her head up. She can't right. get in and out her pants. Let me see. Hold her body, though. Yeah, I don't want her to jump here. There's no doubt that Honey Ray has a head tilt, which indicates to me that more than likely we have an ear infection. Mm -hmm. See we're gonna start with this ear. Hopefully we can see what's going on. Right, so we got a little debris there. Color looks good on this one. You see it's a little wider. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, let's switch ears here. Yeah, well, we definitely got more stuff in here. Okay. You can definitely tell the difference, right? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That's oh, yeah. So we definitely got an ear infection. That's probably what my ears look like. You don't want to end up like that, right? OK. Basically, have otitis. And that's what's causing the head tilt, and that's what's causing us to be off balance. Yeah. So what we need to do is, one, is flush this ear a little bit. Try to get as much as we can out of there. And then we're going to have some medication for you to go home. OK? Oh, where are you going? <laughs> You're not going to like that ear cleaning. Nice. All right, so we're going to get these ears clean, get this baby feeling better here, OK? <laughs> All right. We can have otitis external, which is basically eardrum and out, but we can also have otitis interna or otitis media, and those are inflammation that's on the inside eardrum. This is definitely a case of otitis externa, but because we have a head tilt along with it, it indicates to me that we also have interna. And they can progress until those things really get a severe infection, so it's important we get this straightened out. All right, so we got the ear cleaned up. And we got some medication here for this inflammation. So if you can get someone to hold. Mm -hmm. um, She's the holder. You, oh, you're the holder? And then we're just going to put two or three drops in the ear. All right. Good job. And then just massage a little bit at the bottom. She loves for her head. Oh, Be oh, yeah, yeah, rubbed. <laughs> All right, there you go. Hmm? All right, so we're going to do this once a day, OK? But I want to recheck in a week, okay? Now, we also get sending an oral antibody with you, and you just get one in the morning, one in the evening. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Rabbits are one of those species of animals that once it shows that it's sick, it can go downhill pretty quickly. It's going to be very important that the owners closely monitor Honey Ray. It's okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, don't worry, she's saying. Poor thing. <laughs> Definitely ready to take her home. And I was just thinking about how all the ear problems I've had and how I you know, feel bad when my ears are stopped up. I just hope she can get better. She's scratching her ear. Oh, bless her. A new client arrives that has no time to kid around. Hey, Doc, I got a little special gift for you. <laughs> What's going on? Let's go. They noticed a little mass near the uterus. They said it's been there for about a couple months. What's the name on the goat? This goat is named Little Goat. Okay, Little Goat. Meet the big goat. Let's see what you got. Hey, hey, goat. I'm glad you kept him out my oven. There you go. Ooh, you got a tumor there. I can palpate something. It's big mass. It definitely feels like a tumor right in the mammary glands. But it's super odd for a, a tumor or cancer to be on such a young goat. Just to make sure there's no metastasis, just take a quick lung x ray. <laughs> that is a good looking lung. I don't see any metastasis or what we call mets, which are little pieces of cancer that have broken off and gone to the lungs. All right. I need to take this tumor off. It'll be a little tricky. 
Look like I'm about to have a little goat talk. Come on. Try not to leave any pebbles, uh, goat. <laughs> You're gonna stop everybody cool. I'm a goat for them. <laughs> nah, nah. You wanna eat? You gonna bite my finger. <laughs> I would hit bait you too, but you gonna knock me out. All right, now, talk to the owners. All right. I told them we have a, a pretty nice sized tumor, so we're gonna take it off. All right. I can count on my hands the time that I've had to go to surgery with a goat for something this serious. This critter fixes and we fix them all, so we gotta fix it. This goat. How long they said it's been growing, Doc? Oh, they say it's relatively fast. Uh oh. Is that a lymph node? I just saved it just in case. Maybe I'm missing something here. It's a boy goat. It's a girl. I guess it is, but this is super weird. Let me speak to these owners. Tammy, can you get them on the phone? I mean, we got female parts. Hey. Hey. So, this goat has never had baby goats, has it? She's not even a year old yet. I don't even know if she's, like, gone into the heat for the first time yet. I, I mean, I'm gonna know in a minute, but it's almost like this goat has male and female parts. Oh, my gosh. I just thought I felt testicles. But, I mean, I had to go back and look and make sure, because I do see female parts. I don't know if we got a, almost a hermaphrodite or what's going on. Oh, my goodness. But what about the testicles themselves? Do they need to stay or go? Or... Is your choice? I don't think she'll ever get pregnant. Okay. More moves, everything. Right. I'm going to fix it. So I'll let you know. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. I know I have to remove a tumor from this goat. But also, this goat may be a hermaphrodite, which really makes this even more complicated. The tumor I'm gonna remove is potentially on a male part, possible testicular tumor. Usually when I go to surgery, I know exactly what I'm gonna find. I don't know what I'm gonna find. Let's see what we got. We're gonna start with this thing over here, so I know what I'm dealing with. So I'm making an incision over. That's a testicle, brother. <laughs> For real? He is. Oh, wow. At this point, I know I got a hermaphrodite goat. Ah, uh -huh. ain't never seen nothing like that. All right, we'll make an incision in this other one. We'll see what we got. Ah, it's pus. Abscess testicle. So that's what's going on. A lot of pus. It's almost like soft serve ice cream. Good gracious. Wow. But it is a whole abscess. On top of a tumor? Yes, sir. What I thought was just it was going to be a tumor on a female goat's udder. Turns out to be a tumor on a female goat's testicle. Udder shot. <laughs> <laughs> this is your testicle that has the tumor on it. Go get a young new doctor. So we always have young externs in from time to time. So, have you ever seen a hermaphrodite goat? I've never seen a hermaphrodite goat. So look, what's that right there? The vulva, right? So if you saw that, you'd think this was a what? Female. But. Two testicles. Two testicles. So that's what, this is what you got to look forward to in veterinary mess. <laughs> there you go. In 20 plus years, ain't a lot I haven't seen. This definitely is a case I haven't seen. My plan is to send this tumor out and figure out exactly what it is and then kind of go from there. Hey, Doc. How are you? Doing good. How's so, it been going? Everything went well. We were recovering, but I must tell you, it was quite a different experience. You had two testicles in there. Oh, wow. It was a tumor on the left side on that testicle. Gotcha. But I got it all out. We're going to do some antibiotics. We'll probably go home tomorrow, but we'll keep you posted. Okay. Well, thank you. All right, dear. Talk to you later. The little girl will be staying overnight. We'll be kind of monitoring throughout the night. Make sure everything is good. Make sure we're eating and moving around and drinking. Make sure there are no complications from this. Very different surgery. You want for the record books, little goat. The docs head to their home away from home, V Squared Ranch, for a herd health check. All right, getting into the big city of Reynolds, Georgia. And check on the farm. There's a musket on by a bunch of them. They call them bullets. Scuffle. Scuffle. Scuffle dogs. Yeah. Nasty. Nasty. That's what they are. You know what, musket eye? He ain't all the way countrified in. I know I'm not. I'm proud of that, too. You never had muscadine wine? Bad experience. <laughs> OK. It's a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is it. And we always talked about farms. And one day, we kind of saw this farmer was close to the place and like, rough, ready to be a farmer. And he was like, 
No. <laughs> Who don't want to be a cattle rancher? I mean, it's the South. I mean, it's like the living a dream. Hey, y'all. Shawnee! What up, man? Glad y'all could make it. Yeah. Boss yeah. man, how about it? I'm good, man. I'm having the docs come today because one of the heifers that I'm in charge of, she's had some issues with walking. So what's up with her? This looks like she's not really extending out when she's walking, kind of tiptoeing a little bit. It's in the build the hardest. Always. All right. Come on, girls. So we looking for calf 289? Yes, sir. There you go. There the babies. Look. Come on, girls. Look at them. You fucking proud poppers? Uh, yep. Yeah. Which one we looking for? So we looking for 289. 289. She's in here I somewhere. I see 26 right there. Right here, we right here. We found her. She's right here. She's back here. Or oh, we can try to snag it right now. Come on. Up. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. There you oh, go. Oh, oh, oh. So we'll get her up here in the pen. That's her right there. Go ahead and get hold of her. Oh, oh. Easy enough. 289, she's about a three-month-old heifer. She's out of a Thunderball bull, which for if you're not real big in the cattle industry, it's an important bull from the Angus breed. We want her to be able to be prolific and live a long life and produce babies. I'll feed you. Just hold, hold right. I'm just gonna feel, just see if there's any difference in conformity. Seeing bull legs feel the same? I know, that hurt, huh? Definitely seems to, to bother as I move that leg. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if she stepped in something or mm. had some kind of traumatic injury. I mean, as I've been that, that yeah. leg, she definitely showed some pain. Oh, yeah, you can almost feel a click. Yeah, I felt something. You felt a click? Right here. I, can, uh -huh. I can feel it. I felt it too, yeah. Other than that leg, it seems like a minor injury. She might have stepped in a hole and, and hurt herself, but sound good. Definitely got some pain because the gate is kind of off some. So we want to get some meds on board and see if we can help resolve this situation. This is a product called Banamine. It's a pain anti-inflammatory medication that we use in large animals. So the product works by just absorbing through the skin, then getting the bloodstream, and um, it'll get to the areas it needs to. All right, pretty good. Just want to see you move a little bit. She looks good. Is she good to go out? She yeah, good. she can go to go out. OK. I have Sean do some Panamine in the, over the next week or two. Hopefully that works. If it doesn't get better, we'll probably take her back to the clinic and do some radiographs and possibly some laser therapy. But we need to make sure that uh, this little girl does better. And up next, the big guy. Everybody get ready. This bull is no little calf. Yes, sir. We have a bull here that we want to breed with our cows. But before, we want to make sure he's disease free. All right, let's do a um, trichomoniasis test. On it, Doc. Bovine trichomoniasis is a venereal disease that can be transmitted during natural breeding. Infections in pregnant cows can lead to miscarriage and infertility. We don't want any of our heifers suddenly getting tricked. We wanted to make sure there's no issues when we start our breeding process. You have to do what you have to do to make this farm run and run efficiently. You're going to let these go we through. let these go through. We need to restrain this third one. Third cow in the sheet. Coming through. Get on through there. Let's go, big boy. That's a lot of cow. Keep on your toes. These guys can be unpredictable. So when I tell you, go ahead and let him through. Damn me. Come on, big boy. Ah. Open up, BJ. Coming through. Close it, close it, close it. Good job, boy. Thank you. Oh, oh, we got to get it tighter. All right, I'm going to come a little tighter. Whoa. Get up, big boy. Tighter, tighter. Way, way up here. Yeah, there you go. You got me keeping from getting kicked? I do. All right. That's the biggest range we got on it. I have a 60. Yeah, let's do a 60. With flush in it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. We're getting ready to do our trick test. We have to flush that prepuce out, and then I'm going to take a special catheter up in there, and we're going to get a sample of smegma in there, and that sample we sent out to the lab. It's so low here. Rough on the old man. All right. Good job. I think that's it. You ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got a good sample here. So we're going to get this sample sent out to the lab. And if it comes back negative, our buddy will be ready to breed. And hopefully soon, we'll have some babies running around here. I appreciate y'all I mean, coming no out. Thank you. Good morning, Thunder. Time to go home. Holy smokes. What a day. Back at the clinic, the table is set with Ozzy, a dog with an odd appetite. What up, babe? How are you? I'm good, man. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Nothing like getting a call from your friend and say, hey, I think my dog ate something. Our golden doodle, Ozzy, decided he needed to barf and noticed there was a foreign object in that. But before I could clean it up, he ate it again. If you hang out for a minute, you'll hear his tummy rumbling pretty good, like he's going to blow again, my friend. Andy and I are longtime friends. We've been knowing each other for decades. Well, he texted me. He's like, well, dog, I put dog threw up something, but it didn't look like food. I was like, bring Ozzy right now. We're missing a pink scrunchie at the house. 
All right, let's go to first step. Let me go to Rem, I'll be right back, boss. Okay, sounds good, thanks. I'm not sure if a scruncher will show up on the x-ray, but I decided to go, let's start with some x-rays and see exactly what we see. Thank you, Doc. Oh, all right. A lot's going on. Let's grab Andy. All right. Hmm. When I'm looking in Ozzy's stomach, I can definitely see at the bottom, it looks like dog food, but right above the top of the dog food, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Andy. Yes, sir. When was the last time you had a meal? Uh, this morning. Four or five hours? Mm-hmm. Well, you just ate it again about 30 minutes ago. And it definitely looked like some... Yeah. Well, we're gonna go in and look, and I'll give you a call. Okay. The next step is to go ahead and use my endoscope so I can go down and actually see. You know, with an endoscope, it's definitely a lot safer for an animal. They wake up like nothing's happened. Just maybe a little hungry. Uh-oh, Polly. What? You, you feel it? Yeah. Ah, boy. It might be in his intestine. Oh, man. The scrunchie can be really problematic because once it goes down the small intestine, it typically gets stuck, it starts accordion, it rips and ruptures the small intestine, the animal becomes septic, and I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna be able to get it out. <sighs> All right. Oh, boy. That's, that's already jam-packing, ain't it? Yeah. Get crazy to lie. As I go down and look all over the stomach with the endoscope, I'm not seeing anything because Ozzy has quite a bit of food. You can tell he definitely been eating. So I'm moving food around. Uh-oh, what was that? That's right there. Keep going. Look like it's something that it ain't supposed to be. It kind of threw me off because it looks pink and then the stomach looks pink. Well, like just a little bit, get on top of it. Let's see what you got. Big scratch, That is dog. not a scratch. That is, what in the world? Is that a t-shirt? Uh, who had that going on? <laughs> what in the world is that? I think these are some, these some drawers. <laughs> Turns out what we thought was a pink scrunchie was pink underwear. <laughs> I just want to feel this out of me. Make sure there's nothing else in there. You don't feel it? Though? I don't feel it. It looked like it was so long. It was in part of the stomach, and it got stuck right in the small intestine. So no wonder you were vomiting. Look at all. Let's wake him up. I think I got it all. That's one of the benefits of technology. I mean, years ago, I would have to cut this dog in both the small intestine and in the stomach and try to get this out. Procedure to go in, use the endoscope, increases this dog's chance of living, decreases the pain from the actual recovery from surgery. I mean, this dog will go home and be totally back to normal. It worked out perfect. Hello? What's up? You were correct, except the one that's crunchy. She decided to find somebody's underwear. Wow. Yeah. It was bad, bro. It was all the way in the stomach and in the intestine. So that's why we vomited. I'd have waited another 12 hours. It would have been. You didn't have to cut him off. And we might not live. When do you want me to come get him? Right now? You're the man. All right. Talk. All, all right. right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hey. Huh? While you was gone, Andy brought in his dog. This is his stomach to kind of take it down. Well, you've been eating a lot of something. But my hunch was kind of right, but it was yeah. kind of wrong. But it was a. Her underwear. Who? He or hers? I mean, let's see what Victoria's secret <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And hey, it's probably hers. I ain't going there. Look at all. Obviously, you can laugh and joke about this now, but I mean, probably another 24 hours, this would have turned into a life or death situation. What up, what up, what up? How are you? <laughs> As you can see, we talk about the endoscope, put them down. It like nothing happened, man. Yep. Got <laughs> medicine to keep him from getting nauseous. Okay. And I don't know if you want these back. No. <laughs> we know who the guilty party is, though. That's Liz. <laughs> <laughs> she threw a big sister right under the bus. <laughs> All right, you can have those. So we'll put those in the trash? What did he eat, Mary Margaret? He ate Liz's panties. We're all smiles instead of tears, thanks to Dr. Hodges. We got new rules we're going to put into place. We we'll get some new laundry baskets and we're gonna put them in different places so Brother Ozzy can't get to them anymore. <laughs> My man. All right, so love you, bro. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, pick your man up. Let's go home. <laughs> Holy smokes. Pick See y'all. All right. Savannah, can't borrow you for two seconds. Who's your goat call? <laughs> <laughs> she said just like it. So how did you learn it? I don't know. I just grew up around a lot of animals. James, come here. 
Where are you from? Arkansas. <laughs> Can you remember any animal? Come on, Jane, what you got? Wolf. Wolf. <laughs> she from, is it Los Angeles, Georgia? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Georgia. What y'all mimic down there? Oh, uh, we had chicken. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. I can't do it. <laughs> Make a fish sound. Hey, I'm thinking the same thing. Let me go to work, man. I ain't got time. <laughs> Trying to escape from me? After being treated for an ear infection, Honey Ray returns for an emergency visit. Hey. 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 What's going on? Talk to me. She hasn't been drinking and eating that much, and okay. she can't get into her pants, so she's eating on herself. And we brought Honey Ray back today because she hasn't really gotten any better. She's so, like, off balance. What we need to do, we need to hospitalize her here. We're going to give her some fluids and try to force feed some. Honey Ray was just in here a couple days ago, and she's returned. She's a lot worse than she was. Her neck is more twisted now than it was initially. She's not eating or drinking, which means that she's also developed dehydration. Our problem is this inner ear issue. It has us so contorted. That's why we're probably not eating, because we're not able to balance to eat it or drink it. It's going to be a process here. Sometimes these things will continue to progress, and they get pretty bad. So if the ear doesn't improve, then we're going to talk about quality life. But we're not there yet. Let's keep trying to work here, OK? Oh, you'll call me tomorrow? Yeah, no, I'm going to call you back today. All right. A hunter ray has returned, but that tilt has become worse. So now it's so contorted and tilted that we can't even uh, ride ourselves. So we're going to flush both. And I want to get some sub-Q fluids. And we're going to put meds in both ears. And we change to a different oral. You mean attempt to place a catheter? My fear is that because we're off balance, all we're going to do is roll. Oh, okay. okay. And in that case, it's going to either pull the catheter out or it's going to get all tangled, tangled up, up in yeah. the cord. At this point, you know, it's definitely an emergency situation because we can't get this thing turned around. The results are not going to be good. Come on, honey, Ray. You can pull through. All right, buddy. Get your little fluids there, OK? All right. First thing we need to do is try to get this baby hydrated by giving fluids subcutaneously, which basically means under the skin and between the muscle. Our body is made up of a lot of cells, and those cells have to have a certain amount of fluid in them. And if they don't have a certain amount of fluid, these cells will start to die. Let's get our medicine, the good stuff here. Some antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, as well as some pain meds, too. This is a tough task, but when they feel like they're upside down now and they want to fight. Mm -hmm. So now we're just trying to get some nutrition in. There we go. The issue with the inner ear is very similar to vertigo in humans, and you can imagine being off balance all the time. And it's just very uncomfortable because you can't stand correctly. You can't write yourself. And in this case, we can't even get to food or water, so we're having to do it manually ourselves. It's okay. Oh, there you go. All right. Shake, shake, shake. Just lay right here for a second. Hope you feel better. And this ear infection is pretty severe. My concern level is definitely on, on a 10. All right, Doc. Honey Ray's mom. Hello, how you doing? Good morning. How are you? Doing good. good. So the baby's OK. It's going to be a slow process. You know, it's not going to flip back in a problem of day. So we may have to keep the baby for a few days, at least till I feel comfortable we can get up and get to some food and water. OK, good. So I just wanted to call and give you an update. And we'll keep you posted on, on where we are. OK. OK? All right. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Right. When we get to this point, I don't want to give the owners any false hope that their baby's going to make this miraculous turnaround, because Hunter Ray's prognosis right now is, is guarded at best. But my fingers are crossed that we can get this thing turned around. It's OK. I got you. <laughs> there we go. So. Yes, what you got? Can we sit up here? No. How long you been a veterinarian? 24 years and a few 24 months. 24 years. Yes. What color would you say this goat is? These sound like trick questions, because they look black now. <laughs> black? OK. I figured I'd give you some easy questions. Okay. OK. You can look at the goat and possibly tell if it's a girl or a boy. All right, you got a vulva. It's a female. It's a female? Yeah, not a billy. What would make him a billy? Some testicles. No, no, ain't got no testicles. Because I see a lump there. What is that? That's why I removed the testicle. Really? Yeah. This is the normal one. And then this big one is the wow. one we're going to send out. You need to make that one <laughs> <up. laughs> Man, you are special, bro. We can go home, man. That's one for the ages. Let's go, man. We out of here, man. We, we ain't got work no more. We've seen it all. <laughs> Today is the big day. Our special little goat is going home. The swelling is going down. Little goat is eating, playing, getting back to her old mischievous ways. All right, we're going home. Yay. So. This is actually the health of the test. Okay. <laughs> it's 
Moving forward, my plan is to send this tumor out. Because I want to make sure that it's not cancerous. I'll let you know as soon as I get the results, and we'll go from there. OK. I'm just still flabbergasted. Kind of makes a little bit of sense. Like, maybe that's why she is so spunky and bossy and fights with everyone. That thing was big. And once I took it out, I was surprised. Really? It's not going to try and get it to soar. He has not. That's the good news. <laughs> Y'all hear from me when, uh, when we find out what it is. Thank you so much again. All right. Bye, little girl. Thank, Thank you. you. See y'all later. All right, bye, Doc. All right. I am glad that we got everything removed. I'm hopeful that everything will come back OK. And I'm just happy that little goat was in great hands with Dr. Hodges and can't wait to get her home. Come on, little goat. <laughs>
Yeah, I understand. Yeah, and I'm sorry about that. Dr. Ferguson has a difficult conversation with Honey Ray's owners, whose rabbit has been hospitalized for over a week. You all right? What's wrong? I just talked to Honey Ray's parents. Been fighting this thing for a while with this ear issue. Yeah. And um, for quality life reasons, you know, they decided to humanely euthanize. Ugh. I mean, it's the right thing. It's yeah. the right thing. You know, we tried. Okay. Hunter Ray had them bounce back like we would like talking with the owner. We decided in this case, it's the best thing to do is just let her be at peace and do a humane euthanasia. She's so sweet. That hurts my heart. We don't want the baby to suffer. So I know. you get ready and um, we'll take care of it. Okay. All right. The hardest thing to do is to tell an owner that you don't have any other option. Most definitely. Once it get to that point that the baby's quality of life is not good, we know the answer. Yeah. It's still hard and difficult. Still though. Hard. And as veterinarians, we have to try to explain the best we can, comfort as best we can, just be there to console them and let them know 100% that they're doing the right thing. We always want to be sentimental because we want them to understand that they're not going through this process alone, and we definitely understand what they're going through. You all right? How you feel? Critter fixer vet student Ty Cook attends to a young cat with an unfortunate tail. Hey, Dr. Ferguson. Yes, ma'am. I have Callie here. Two days ago, she got her tail stuck in the door, Ooh. and now it looks like this. Oh, man. All right, let's go over and take a look. Dr. Cook is shadowing me today, and Dr. Cook is a fourth-year veterinary student. There's one thing that we're very proud of at Critter Fixer, and it's what we call our Critter Fixer Treat. Those students that have gone on to become veterinarians all over the country that Critter Fixer has had a hand on. Feels hard right there, right? Yeah. All right, so more than likely, we got issues. The end of this tail, it's already necrotic. <sighs> I don't like it. Let's shoot an x-ray just to see if there's a break or fracture or dislocation or maybe something higher up. Because honestly, you know what we got to do, right? What we got to do? Uh, amputation. Sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. At the end of the tail is, is basically dead or is going to die. Can't get blood supply. And the last thing we need is to get a blood infection and cause a systemic issue when we only have an issue with just the end of the tail. All right, Doc, what you got? It doesn't look like any vertebrae are okay. broken. It just all looks like soft tissue. Yeah, well, you know it's neurological too, right? Oh, that's true. It's visible where all the damage is from this area to here, so we probably need to go at least here mm -hmm. and uh, amputate. At least we'll leave a good length of tail. I guess we need to get with the owner, let her know what we need to do, and go to surgery. Sounds good. Dr. Cook is going to assist me in this tail amputation, and it's always good to have these interns in because one of the things that Dr. Hodge and I really, really love to do is invest in the future, and no greater way to do it than invest in these interns. Talk to them about what we're going to do here. Get the tail facing you. Okay, Bam, you just cut it off. Normally, you got a vessel here, vessel here, a vessel there. Okay. okay. So you want towel if you can, towel, towel. And it's going to be tight. You're going to pull the skin back, try to take a bite, tight. You make it seem so easy. A little nervous. I've never amputated a tail before. All right, trachea. Be somewhere right here. Can you put her nose back that way for me? Lift her up. She's so thin. Come on, kitty. There we go. Good kitty. I'm going this way. Go, 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 go. We have a lot of other surgeries that are more routine surgery scheduled, but this one is one that I really need to get in and take care of because this cat is in a lot of pain. So I think we're going to get to skip the line today. All right, so where are we going to take this thing off? You right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So normally when we make our thing, we want to make a kind of a V. Mm -hmm. Before I cut it, to then put a tourniquet. You remember we talked about those vessels there? So we're gonna go up in here, take a bite. You wanna hold that tail there for me? Well, it's important, you know, to have that mentor that can kind of show you the ropes. You know, I had that. I had a um, veterinarian, Dr. Corker, who basically showed and taught me pretty much everything I know. Mm-hmm. I got you. All right, so what we'll do, we're gonna cut this thing. So now we're just gonna put a few in the skin. I guess I'll suit it since it's so small here. We'll leave the, the next big tail to you. Okay. All right. So we need to vanish this thing up. 
I see those scissors. You got, you know, you're putting on a tenant tape. Oh, you're right. This does tear. Mm hmm. Oh, no, cut it, cut it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the neck class. That's the last class before you leave vet school. They ain't talked to that one yet, honey. All righty, all righty, all righty. And we're done. Congratulations, Doc. Your first tail amputation. I did it. Kind of did great. I'm happy that it was the end of the tail, so we didn't have to remove a lot. Once the tail is healed up, the hair is growing back, you may not even notice that any was removed. And Dr. Cook did a fantastic job, and I know she's going to be a great veterinarian one day, maybe even part of the Critter Fixer team. Hmm? You can stay long as you want to. Let's get these fluids going. I'm learning. I'm taking some mental notes. Then we had the huge tumor. It looks perfect. Following an overnight recovery, Diamond the dog's brilliance is ready to shine. How are you? Hey! You remember last time what it looked like? Tim, what you think? She looks beautiful. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm so glad. I mean, it's almost perfect. She did great during the surgery. A big wad of intestines was out. Big. Really? Uh, I mean, it looked like it from the outside. It, it was really like it, it was huge. But we just poked it back in. Okay. No running and jumping for about at least another four or five days. All right. Got some antibiotics for you. Okay. Y'all gonna be good. All, All right. right. Thank See you later. Thank you so much. Thank you Bye so much. Bye now. Hey. Dr. Hodges say she did good during the procedure. They say she did good overnight, and I'm happy. Fingers crossed. I have many more years of joy. <laughs> so excited, Diamond. I missed you last night. <laughs> Hey, how's that hermaphrodite goat you had? <sighs> Man. Look at old Ashley coming in today for a recheck. It's a boy goat. This is a girl. This is super weird. That's a testicle, brother. Ah. Uh -huh. Ain't never seen anything like this. Hey, that was one special goat. Man, one special crazy surgery. Definitely, when you write those memoirs, that's one for the book. I'm talking about that's gonna be the first child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little goat. We're bringing back Will Goat because she had her surgery two weeks ago. I'm really hoping that we hear nothing but good news and that it was just testicles. That's strange to ask for, but I'm hoping just for that and no, no cancer, no bad news, nothing that she's going to have to have further treatment for. What's up? Don't worry about that. You know, we got folks to do it. It's okay. No worries. But it is a testicle. Yeah. So it's an abscess with coccyx bacteria. It's not cancerous, so that's really good news. Yes, very glad to hear that. <laughs> Little Gold is definitely confirmed as a hermaphrodite. But the good news is we have a sweet baby who doesn't have cancer. Have you seen any mounting? Just curious, I mean, now that we're looking back. Well, yeah, and she's the smallest of all of our goats. So we have one goat that's a male that um, he's really dominant. And she's the only one that will go heads up with him. And thought she was really awesome. She is awesome. It takes testosterone about 30 days to go to zero. So it might be waning down, maybe, but we may have some male characteristics. We'll go take these stitches out. Come on, Lugo. All right, come on. Uh, wow. It healed up pretty good. When I look at Little Gold's sutures, man, they look great. It's closed up well. There's no inflammation, no pain. Little Goat is doing fantastic. Man, this is some miracle. Goat here. You ever seen anything like that? <laughs> he, the goat he, said, he no. said no. <laughs> he said there's only one of me. We goat to go. <laughs> <laughs> little goat has a clean bill of health. It's good to go. She's ready to go out back out in the pasture with the other goat. <laughs> you going home now, we baby. Hey guys, you recognize them? Hey baby. <laughs> little goat. Little goat, look. Look, little goat. See you later. Thanks again, Doc. Sure. My man. I'm very relieved that the results came back uh, cancer-free. All's fine, all's clear. So we're just ready to get her back home on the farm and let her live life. We're going to love Little Goat till the end of time. She's just super special, especially now. Come on, Little Goat. <laughs>